Good afternoon and welcome to the nation's capital. We are delighted that you're here and really sorry about the weather, especially for my friends from Louisiana. They're freezing. That's, that's my home state. <laughs> it, it's my great privilege to stand alongside Jeannie and all of my great colleagues who are joining us here today and so many extraordinary leaders who are braving the weather to join us for this important tradition. And it is an important one. We're so encouraged to see all of you everybody from across the land. We, the beauty of this event is that it's a beautiful picture of America. We have people from all walks of life, all ages, all experiences, all backgrounds, and we're all joining to celebrate life and what it means to be an American. Thank you for being a part of that. It was the great uh, British statesman G.K. Chesterton who famously observed that America is the only nation in the world that was founded upon a creed. And he said it was listed with theological lucidity in the Declaration of Independence. What is that creed? What is it from our nation's birth certificate, the Declaration, that makes us who we are? We know the language so well. We hold these truths to be self-evident. In other words, obvious, that all men are created equal. Not born equal, created equal. That's what the founder said. That's right. And that they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, including the right to life and liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Those are inalienable rights. They cannot be taken away. And, and so it's from the very beginning that our founders boldly proclaimed those self-evident truths, that our rights do not come from government. Our rights come from God, our creator. That's right. And it also means that every single person has inestimable dignity and value. And your value is not related in any way to the color of your skin or what zip code you live in, what, how good you are in sports, where you went to high school, it's irrelevant. Your value is inherent because it is given to you by your creator. Our national creed is the essence of who we are in this country. It is the foundational principle that made us the freest, most successful, most powerful, most benevolent nation in the history of the world. And we can never forget that. I am myself a product of an unplanned pregnancy. In January of 1972, exactly one year before Roe v. Wade, my parents, who were just teenagers at the time, chose life. And I am very profoundly grateful that they did. See, what we have to do right now, and I believe the reason all of you are here is you understand that we have to build a culture that encourages and assists more and more people to make that same decision. This is a critical time to help all moms who are facing unplanned pregnancies, to work with foster children, and to help families who are adopting, to volunteer and assist our vital pregnancy resource centers in our maternity homes, and to reach out a renewed hand of compassion and to speak the truth in love. That's what we do. All of us can play a role in that really important work. This is also a pivotal time to promote quality health care for both women and their unborn children. This week in Congress, you'll be encouraged to know the House passed the Pregnant Students' Rights Act because, that's right, because uh, being pregnant while finishing your degree can be really difficult, but, but women should not be presented with a false choice of being a mom or being a student. That's right. We also passed the Supporting Pregnant and Parenting Women and Families Act. That's a big one, too. Right now, right now, you should know, the Biden administration is proposing a regulation to restrict funds to pregnancy resource centers. We know those are the centers that states rely on to ass assist uh, expecting moms and dads, and that action would undercut that important work, the important material support that expecting and first-time mothers get from these centers. Our bill would prevent that regulation from coming into effect and ensure that the states can utilize these centers to help people in need. Who could be opposed to that? We're, we're passing these bills and we're marching today because it takes a lot of work to convince people that every single human child, every unborn child, has a value that is too profound and precious to ignore. And we have every reason to be optimistic, my friends, that we can change public opinion. We find encouragement from the leaders of previous generations. We can learn from the great Americans who changed public opinion throughout our history. Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass and Susan B. Anthony. They challenged the prevailing narratives of their day and they succeeded. And you know how they did that? We have to remember this, this is the key. 
th their success was grounded in our nation's creed that we just spoke about. And they reminded their fellow Americans about our founding principles, and as Lincoln said in his famous first inaugural, the better angels of our nature. We should do the same thing today. My friends, let's be encouraged, let's press on in hope and that we can join together and make this great difference. I believe that we can. We can stand with every woman for every child and we can truly build a culture that cherishes and protects life. God bless you. Thanks for braving, braving the weather. We'll see you soon. Jeannie, thank you so very much. And uh, first of all, on behalf of my wife, Marie, and my very distinguished and courageous and effective lawmakers that are on this stage and a few others that couldn't be here, thank you, Jeannie Mancini, for your leadership. It is extraordinary. You know, ladies and gentlemen, at a New Jersey Pregnancy Resource Center, two women expressed through tears of joy their deep and abiding gratitude for the incredible love, respect, and care that persuaded them to reverse their decision to abort their babies. They spoke of how desperate and even hopeless they were, and they thanked the director for being there in a non-judgmental and a very gentle way to persuade them to have their child. They chose life. Then, two teenage girls got up, took to the podium, stood side by side, and they talked about their lives, school, their family, their friends, sports, and their reverence for the sanctity of human life. Near the end of their remarks, however, they turned towards the director of the center and said, if you didn't persuade our moms to let us live, we would be dead. I was so moved and, and to hear that kind of testimony. There are more than 2,700 pregnancy resource centers throughout the United States, each and every one of them an oasis of love, compassion, empathy, respect, and care for both mothers and their children. As Jeannie mentioned earlier, Americans agree. The new Marist National Poll found that 83% of all Americans, including 75% of Democrats, support, I say again, support pregnancy resource centers. They, like all of us in this human rights movement, stand with every woman and for every child. We reject the violence of abortion, dismemberment, child beheadings, and abortion pills that literally starve the baby to death. As you all know, Dobbs conveyed the lawmakers newfound powers at every level, federal, state, and local, to save lives. We're greatly encouraged and filled with hope and resolve. Lives are being saved. Yeah, we'll have a setback here and there. Every human rights struggle does, but we are undeterred. We will not give up. At least 25 states now have statutes that are either in effect or being litigated that protect life. My own state is one of the bad ones. Uh, we have abortion till birth but we won't quit in New Jersey either in trying to overturn a law that was passed by our governor and by the legislature. This week, under, as he said, Mike Johnson's leadership, two new important pro-life bills authored by two courageous lawmakers, Michelle Fishbach and Ashley Hinson, passed the House. We're working, and we're working for the babies and their mothers. Tragically, President Biden, the abortion president, has weaponized the entire federal bureaucracy to aggressively promote abortion on demand, including a full court press to force taxpayers to pay for it. Last Congress, President Biden's absolute support was for this, to say, and the House Democrats passed this not once, but twice, legislation to enable and, and authorize abortion right up to the moment of birth. Think of it, all nine months and that baby can be killed. And that's Biden's view. That extremist legislation poses an existential threat to countless women and to children. The Biden administration and some governors and lawmakers, including in the House and Senate, continue to smear and misrepresent the noble work of pregnancy care centers, and we can't let that happen either. We will never, and I know so many of you, especially over the years, we will never Never, never, with the grace of God, never quit in our defense for the weakest and the most vulnerable. Thank you.